Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 Paul the apostle said for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain this morning I want to challenge our minds on the subject what are you living for For to me to live is Christ and to die. Oh, to be like you. Oh, to be like you. Blessed Redeemer. Here is the world Come in your sweetness Come in thy fullness Stand by no image Deep in my heart Or to be like Blessed Redeemer, pure as the world, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own To be like thee, or to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as the Lord, come in thy sweetness, come in thy Stop my dreams deep in my It's a question that everybody needs to ask. What am I living for? People live for different things in this world. I was talking with a young man the other day and he said life is all about making money building houses, just enjoy life. Just make, it's all about making money. I say, is that really what life is all about? I was talking to another one. He said, oh, it's all about beautiful travels. It's all about fine cars. It's all about fine houses. I say, so is that all that life is all about? What are you living for? Can be answered in five quest five questions. Many, but I'll just answer five. Number one, what is your priority in life? What is your priority? The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, and other things shall be added. What is your number one? On your scale of preferences, what is your number one? 
What is your priority? When you wake up in the morning, what comes to mind first? In your thought of making money, it is for what purpose? Is it just to become wealthy and then become, have a lot of houses and things? Or to be comfortable enough to face God without distraction? What is your priority in life? It defines what you are living for. Number two, what drives your actions in life? What drives your actions? The things you do, what is the reason why you do them? What is the reason why you are chasing money? Even for the sake of marriage, why do you want to marry? So that you can be like every other person? So that the pressure of the flesh can die? Or so you can be connected with somebody with whom you will serve God effectively, raise godly children, and make heaven together? What drives your action? Why do you want to marry? Why do you want money? What do you want to do with the money? So that you can be popular and be called one of the richest men or women in the world? Or so that you can impact humanity, impact eternity? What drives your actions? Ask yourself. The way you are dressed now, what is the reason for it? To show the dignity of God? Or to advertise the, the shape of your body? Or to drive as many people to hell as possible? Who are you dressing for, for example? What drives your actions? What is your priority in life? What drives your actions? Number three. What unlocks your enthusiasm and energy? What brings you alive? What causes your energy to come alive? What unlocks your enthusiasm? What unlocks it? What is it that makes you come alive? You may be dull otherwise. But when they mention it, you come alive. It defines what you are living for. Some people come alive only when you mention football. So and so team is playing against so and so. Or when you mention, um, a, when you begin to mention different cars. This is Ferrari, this is this and this is that. Or when you are talking women, or talking money, or talking dollars, some people come alive. What is it that makes you come alive? For me, chasing after souls and pulling them from hell, watching the manifestations of God, the mighty acts of God, Seeing massive audiences of people turning to God or ministering to the poor, the needy, the afflicted, seeing tears wiped off their eyes, their faces. One day, we're ministering to widows and orphans at the center there. And I saw the reaction of one woman to just the rice, the beans, and the things that she was giving. I saw her reaction. Her reaction broke me down. I wept like a baby. The thing she was giving was, so, was it touched her so much. And she was saying, Lord, how, how did you do this? How would I have done? What? Thank you, Lord. The way she was talking broke me down. And for me, how many people in this world are like this? My energy comes alive. I don't know what tiredness is. 
when it comes to making impact. One day, I was to have a, a crusade in Kogi State in, Anye, in Anyeba, right? Were you the one there at that time? He was the pastor at that time. And I was so tired, I was so exhausted. The crusade was, I think, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, Friday. I, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I, had, I was meant to travel. Please take your seat now. I was meant to travel by Tuesday after healing service like this to hit the road and, and, and go. And the whole week before, the, the schedule was very hectic. After Tuesday service, I felt very exhausted when I thought of Abuja to Abaji, Abaji to Lokoja, Lokoja to Ajokuta, Ajokuta to Itobe, all the way to Anibar. When I imagined the road, the tiredness multiplied. So I called the pastor. I said, I am so sorry. Please, you people carry on the service tonight. I may preach to the people over the phone or over anything tonight. But physically, I'm exhausted. I'm, I can't, I'm not imagining coming today. Please bear in mind. And humbly, he said, yes, sir. Even though people have been coming to the crusade ground since 12 o'clock, the place is jammed. This is since 12. They have got, they are, they are there. And they have come from various villages. 12 o'clock. When I heard that, tiredness disappeared. Since 12 o'clock, I'm coming. People have been there since 12 o'clock. I'm already there. I got there. It was already dark, but the people were everywhere. My energy came back alive on the spot. Hearing that people are already on the crusade ground. Hearing that they've been waiting since morning. I couldn't imagine leaving them there. I couldn't imagine them coming and then, no. I hit the road. No tiredness died. I stepped in there, preached like somebody that has, not, that has rested for, for the whole week. Miracle signs, wonders took place. The thing that turn on your energy determines why you are living. It's a definition of your purpose for living. What turns on your enthusiasm? What makes you feel tireless? It determines it defines what you are living for. What is your priority in life? What drives your actions in life? What unlocks your enthusiasm, your energy? Number four, what is your greatest aspiration or ambition in life? What is your greatest aspiration? What is your greatest ambition? What are you aspiring towards? What are you looking forward to? If so and so is achieved, I consider it as my greatest achievement in life. What is that? Is it earthly? Is it spiritual? It determines why you are living. It defines what you are living for. And finally, number five for today, what is the summary of your existence? What is the summary? If people who know you are to describe you, what will they say as you are now? What is the summary of your existence? Like Jesus said, what do men say that I, the son of man, am? Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. What is the summary? What, 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 is, what is the, 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 the abbreviation of your existence. What is the summary? Some people they say, oh, she goes to church all the time. But we and her, we are the same. We that don't go to church are even better. He goes to church all the time, but he's still a drunkard. He beats his wife every day. What is the summary of your existence? There are some people, they call them pastor. Not that they are pastors, but because of their passion for God. In the whole neighborhood, if there is any problem, they will call them. Because they know they are equal to the task. 
they know they are authentic. They are not plastic. What is the summary of your life? Those who know you, what are they saying? Even yourself, what are you saying about yourself? It determines what you are living for. Please, I like us to live for the things that matter. Live for what matters. Live for eternal. Live for eternity. Because our time on the earth is so brief, compared with how long we will live in eternity. Live for what matters. Why is it important to know why we are alive? It is nobody goes to collect salary for from government who is not working for government. If you spend your time and your energy and your resources for government, they will be responsible for you. They pay you salary, housing allowance, transport allowance, medical allowance, even leave grants. They pay you these things because you are, you are giving them your energy, your resources. Who what or who you live for determines what or who will be responsible for your welfare in the air. There are many people who are not living for God and yet they are blaming God for not taking care of them. Many people are not living for God but they are blaming God for not taking care of them. They are on their own. God is on his own. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego lived for God in Babylon. When they were inside fire, God entered the fire with them. When Daniel lived for God in Babylon, when Daniel entered the lion's den, God sent an angel to meet Daniel there. Ay, 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 ay. When Paul and Silas lived for God, when they put them in prison, God entered the prison, caused an earthquake, and brought them out. Who you are living for determines who is responsible for your life. Walking on the road, dressing almost naked, you are saying, God, why haven't you given me a husband? Let your flesh give you the husband. The flesh you are advertising should produce for you a husband. You are fraudulently doing your own things and asking God to give you money. Let your crookedness give you the money. Not God. It's what I'm preaching here this morning very hard. At times we need to settle down and hear these things so that you don't just come collect healing and go. What is the use of a healing that ends you in hell at the end? Thank God for healing of blind eyes but your eyes open on the earth and then closes in hellfire. What's the use? Take your sin. Am I communicating at all? It is time not to deceive ourselves or deceive God or deceive people. It is time for somebody to look at you without you telling them that you go to church for them to say this is a child of God. The Bible said the disciples were called Christians in Antioch. Not that they advertised themselves. People saw them and concluded when they saw their character, saw their behavior, saw their appearance, there was a conclusion. Acts chapter 11 verse 26. They saw their behavior, saw their character, saw their appearance. Everything about them is pointing to Christ. Everything. Everything. Take your seat. Now Christians are competing with unbelievers for badness of dress. And competing for many things. What or who you live for determines what or who will be responsible for your welfare in the earth. Secondly, what and who you live for on the earth determines who you will live with in eternity. 
what you live for in the earth, who you live for in the earth, will determine who you will live with in eternity. Nobody can live for Satan on the earth and live with God in, in heaven. It's not possible. Nobody can live for themselves on the earth because self is, uh, is under the instruction of, of the devil. Nobody can live for self himself. God is out of your, your shadow on earth and then you find yourself in heaven at the end. It's not possible. What and who you live for in the earth determines who you will live with in eternity. You want to live with God after you die? Live with God now. Live for God now and with him now. If you want to live with God after you die. You know Paul the apostle said, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If you did not live for Christ, your death cannot be gain. It will be losses. Until we live for Christ in the earth, Death is not gain. Death becomes a loss. A loss because, I mean, when a person dies and ends in hell, that is an eternal loss. It's a new day for you. And it's a new day for us. Father, we thank you.